Hi everyone, how are you? This video is going to be about protecting business ideas, how you can do it, and whether you should do it. Uh, I get asked on my apps about protecting video, uh, protecting business ideas a lot, and uh, even though many people are realizing it's not a very worthwhile thing to do, most people in some way or another are still private about their ideas, so there's still, for most entrepreneurs, the, the idea of protecting their the concept of protecting their ideas is still um, an interesting one because they need it. Um, so very quickly I'll get into some ways uh, to protect your business ideas and then I'll talk about uh, whether you should. Uh, so the most common thing people use to protect business ideas is, an, is a document called, called NDA. It stands for Non-Disclosure Agreement. Uh, it basically binds the person who is signing, signing the agreement that they're not, that they're not going to disclose uh, whatever you're telling them about your business. The NDA can be between companies and a company and a company. It can be between a person and a person. And it can be one way or both ways. Uh, meaning that only one person is protected or two people are protected. And it can be uh, between various organizations like a nonprofit and a person, a person and a person, you get it. So uh, that's NDA. Uh, the challenge with the NDA is that if you do have your idea stolen um, to actually have it be valuable, you have to take that person to court. Um, and that's going to be expensive for you and you're likely not going to win that much unless that person created a big, gigantic company which is worth a lot. And even then, you, you may not be able to prove um, that, that, that you know it was your idea that they stole. So... Uh, it's going to be very challenging for you to really um, kind of like get anything back from that NDA. Um, it's, 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 it's more commonly a tool for larger companies. The um, small, small uh, companies are, and first-time entrepreneurs, they, they usually kind of uh, are not able to get that value back what that NDA. Um, and what, NDA, what the NDA does is it's sort of like, puts a barrier between you and the person who's giving you help, right? So if somebody's giving you help or advice with your business, um, it, it's harder to get that help because instead of saying, instead of opening your ears and listening and getting the help or something, uh, or whatever you want that person to do, uh, instead, instead you're just saying, hey, I can't really work with you until you sign a document. And people may not want to sign documents. I mean, it's annoying, uh, you know, the person feels like you don't trust them. <clears throat> uh, and many people don't sign NDAs on principle. Um, like investors are known for not signing NDAs because they see so many companies that it's impossible that to, to really like tell, you know, ideas sort of repeat and they don't want to, they don't want to hold, like they don't want to get help to various things, you know. Um, so many people don't even sign NDAs. Um, uh, additionally, there's a large misconception. Um, so that's NDA. There's there's also a large misconception that uh, a patent may protect your business idea, and that's totally wrong because patent you cannot patent an idea. So uh, if you have not started and if you just have an idea, forget patents. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's the doc. Those are the documents. There are things like trademark and copyright, but those are not for ideas. Again. So they are protective mechanisms, legal mechanisms, but they're not for ideas. Um, and I'll talk about those in other videos on topics where they're related. Uh, so that's it. So the, the main document you have at your disposal is the NDA, the Non-Disclosure Agreement. It is not very effective and it makes it a little bit, it, it sort of acts as also as a barrier between you and whoever you're making sign the NDA because it, it it kind of puts a wall between you be before you can start working with them. And if you're trying to recruit or if you're trying to get an investment or if you're trying to uh, anything else, sell your product, uh, it's very difficult, you know, to, it's even more difficult to do that if you make them sign an NDA and it, it just, it's just not a great way. So I'm not for it. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm, I, I don't like it when people make me sign NDAs and uh, I don't, I don't make people sign NDAs, um, but it is an option if you feel like you really want to be protected. One thing that I do um, do is when 
protecting my ideas. And I'm not big on protecting my ideas, but I know there there is uh, there are reasons for doing that. Um, but the best thing you can do is not a legal thing at all. The best thing you can do is work with people who you can trust. So you have to work with people who, um, as much as you can, you have to work with people, with people who are trustworthy, who have a reputation for tr being trustworthy, and who aren't going to do bad things to you. Whether that's, you know, and that's many things. It's not. It's not just. It doesn't just stop at business ideas. It's. It's everything every day in your business. Uh, you have to work with people with whom you trust. Um, everything will be easier uh, because if you work with people who maybe are talented, but uh, you know you can't tell if they're trustworthy. Um, you know, sometimes if there's doubt about it, there's no. There's really no doubt because if there's doubt about it, it, it may be. Um, you know, there may be clues to something. I don't know, but um, so try to actually pay attention to who you are working with. Because that's going to go a long way, whether your ideas are stolen or whether something else um, unjust goes on in your company, right? Because you, what you want is a good atmosphere um, where people are happy working and not where, in not one where people are like watching their backs, right? Because that's not going to help the work. Um, so that's sort of my advice for uh, how do you protect your business ideas, right? It's not a legal it's thing. It's a human thing. It's a relationship thing. Um, and if you really kind of um, feel like you want to be private, um, uh, you can be. But you know, the more people you talk to, the more people you pitch, and the more people you um, sort of interact with and discuss your idea, the more feedback you'll get, and the, you know, the, those more conversations will help you evolve your idea. Uh, and uh, of course, conversely, if you don't talk to people, if you if you if you stay private and if you don't talk to people and you kind of are on the fence, that then you just the business will just grow a little slower, and that may be okay because you're, what you're getting is the protection. Um, what you're getting is the, less people are able to take your idea. But but keep in mind that if you are private um, and, you, and you don't talk to as many people as you should, um, it will kind of make your business grow a little slower probably because you just won't get that feedback. You won't get that evolution of ideas uh, of your idea. That, that, that would come from talking to many people. Uh, so that's it. That Those are pretty much my uh, suggestions. Um, if you liked the video, if you thought it was helpful, um, please subscribe to my channel um, and leave me a comment. I really like comments. Uh, and I'll, maybe I'll reply back. Uh, and please check out my apps at problemio.com. They're mobile apps for starting and planning a business, marketing, fundraising, everything. Uh, and they're available on iOS, Android, Kindle and other devices. So uh, check out my apps at problemio.com um, and let me know what you think about those. Bye.